Is election biblical? Well, most people who read their Bible are going to say, yes, it's biblical. The question is, what do we mean by election? What do we mean by God having chosen someone? Is it God choosing someone based upon them choosing him first? Is it God choosing someone before they even want to or have the ability to choose? Is it, as some would even say, that what God actually chooses is the method, the means by which a person can be saved? Well, I want to look at a passage that we've all covered before we looked at it. And I want to show you how there's only really one way that you can take this passage, because again, we all speak a language. Right now it's English. There are rules to English. But even if we go and look at the language in which this was written, the language that was spoken at the time, Greek, which was the lingua franca, we can see, because of their rules, how we should take this particular passage. So that being said, let's go to Ephesians chapter 1. Let's, start, let, let's go ahead and start in verse 3. That's not a problem. And then we'll make our way to verses 4 and possibly 5. But in 3, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Just as, and so what this part, just as, is from the Greek word kathos, which is saying even as, or it's kind of given an example of what he's done. And so he says, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him. Now, the question is going to be, what exactly does that mean? There are some, there are some who take election to mean, and by the way, the word is literally election in the Bible, the word to choose or to elect, it's there. So we cannot get past that, but it's how we define election. And there are some that'll say, well, no, it's not that God chose us who are happened to, who happen to be believers, that he chose us before we would choose him. Before the world was, he decided to choose us. Some will say, no, what it was, was before the world, he decided to choose Jesus as the vehicle. In other words, look at it this way. We are all saved if we're in Christ. And so some would say that what is the chosen vessel isn't us, it's Jesus. In other words, he's the, he's the bus. And God has chosen him to be the bus. And then if we happen to get on, well, then if we're on that bus, well, then we'll be saved. Whereas others would say, no, Jesus is not the bus. We are the ones that's chosen and he chooses us to get on the bus. And there's a difference. So let's see which one of these passages or which one of these beliefs are correct. And maybe I think the grammar sets it, makes it clear. Matter of fact, make I think irrefutable. Now, I could be wrong. But before I go to the passage, I want to talk about a couple things. In English, just the basic sentence structure, especially if there's a verb in it, we would say something like, I threw the ball to John. Well, I would be the subject, but throw is obviously the verb. And then John, I mean, the ball is what we call the direct object. And then the indirect object is to John. Now, I don't have to have the indirect object for the sentence to be complete. I could just say, I threw the ball. And then to John, the indirect object being added gives extra clarification. Matter of fact, it helps to clarify. Well, we're going to see the same thing here. We're going to see a verb. We're going to see a direct object. And we're going to see an indirect object. As a matter of fact, it's important to even look at the the, the, uh, the mood of that particular ver verb. So he says that he, obviously that's God, chose us. And here's the Greek word, exiloxita. This is, guys, in, if you look down at the bottom of the screen, this is in the singular aorist middle indicative, meaning that it's God who chose for himself. So since God is the one who chose for himself, it's in the middle voice. He's, he's doing it for his benefit. Doing what? Well, he chose. And who did he choose? Is it that he chose Christ or that he chose us? Well, we'll know who was chosen by looking at the direct object. In Greek, this word right here, this is hemas, which is uh, for us. This is what's called the uh, the accusative. It is, it is in the accusative. And in Greek, the accusative is the direct object. Then we'll find and notice what we were chosen to be in or chosen for what. We'll see that this word, these two words, and auto, which is in him, the auto, that is in the dative. The dative is the indirect object. So 
it would be difficult to come back and say that God chose Jesus as the method. If that were the case, if Jesus was the one that was chosen for us to be saved in, that we have to then be in him, then the out to would be in the accuser or the him would be in the accuser. Jesus would be in the accuser, but no, it's us. He chose us. And this is Paul speaking. He says, well, he chose us, chose us for what? To be in him. He chose us in him. Are you with me? Now, unless I've got my grammar incorrect, be it Greek or English, then this should be pretty clear in the fact that he was the one chose for his benefit. Now, some are going to want to say, well, wait a second, though. Wait a second. Chose us when? That's also something we ought to look at. And so if we continue looking, that we would be holy and blameless before him. But look what he says. He chose us when? Before the foundation of the world. So, exalaxitas hemas ain't out to pra katabales. This pra katabales, this pra before the foundation, cosmo of the world. And then ane hemas, which is to be, um, to be us, that is, that we would be holy and blameless. But this is what I want to focus on, this pra katabale, before the foundation of the world. So when did he choose us? Not choosing us after we chose him, but choosing us before the world existed. Should we take this pra katabales as to mean before the world existed? Well, yes, because we can go back and look at other times that this pra katabales was used. One other example would be uh, John chapter 17, verse 24. Father, I desire that, that they also whom you have given me, this is Jesus praying, be with me where I am going so that they may see my glory, which you have given me. And look what he says, for you love me before the foundation of the world. Now, look at the verbiage over here. You love me, agapesas uh, me, pra katabales, before, and also cosmo of the world. So before the foundation of the world, he didn't love Jesus. Not saying that he loved him since the world was. He loved him before there was a world. Are you with me? Before the earth existed. The exact same verbiage is used there. As a matter of fact, if we go to John 17, 5, we'll see something similar to it in John 17, 5. He says, and now, Father, glorify me with your own presence, with the glory that I had with you before the world existed. Now, it's not pra katabales, but in this case, it's pra tutan kosman, which is pra before the world existed. So this verbiage that we see with, with this Greek word pra should be taken as before. Before there was the world, going back to Ephesians 1, before there was the world, what did God do? God chose us in him. So all of us that are in him, we were chosen in him when? Before the world was, before there was you making a decision, before uh, God seeing that what you're going to do. No, none of these things are in play here. What's in play here is that he chose you. And then if we go to verse five, we can look and see what he says. Chose us, he predestined. Now the word uh, prorisas, which necessarily means to destine in advance, to predetermine, does not mean, it cannot mean that you destine us after you saw what we were going to do, then that would that would take away the term for destined and certainly predestined. Predestined necessarily means before you do anything, which also means before seeing you do anything. So he predestined us to be to uh, predestine us to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ. Now we will be adopted through Jesus Christ. And how was this done? Why was this done? Well, the Bible says according to His kind intention according to his goodwill, according to his purpose. And so we might not agree with that, but again, this is us being predestined according to his goodwill, according to, in this case, according to his kind intention. It's not some uh, arbitrary way of doing so, though we don't fully understand why and how and so forth. That doesn't mean anything. Similarly, when we do something for our children and our children might not understand why or how, doesn't mean that it's not done. Our lack of understanding does not negate what God has done, or in this case, what he's done and what he said. So to me, I think it's pretty clear that yes, he does elect, that he does choose. There are going to be some folks who are on the Calvinist side, those who are 
non-Calvinist. This is not a Calvinist position, though Calvinists do hold of this position. I'm not a Calvinist, but I also hold of this position as well. Why? Because the scriptures say so. Now, some are going to say, what about free will or what about this or what about that? Before we deal with that, I would ask anyone that would disagree to simply look at the text, because if, if you disagree that God chooses us based on his own good pleasure, even though he might not share with us why before the world, if you disagree with that, then I would ask that you would just simply look at this text and tell me why do I take, why is this text the way that I've taken it? Why is it wrong? Why is the grammar that I've used when looking at the, uh, the subject, the verb, the direct object, and the indirect object. Where did I go wrong? Because in order for another passage to negate this, this passage also has to uh, say the same thing, unless we're going to say that we have a contradiction. I don't think that we're going to say that there's a contradiction in the scriptures. So we're going to have to say that if I'm wrong, where am I wrong in this passage? Now, I've covered other passages before, dealing with election and so forth. But this passage, in and of itself, means what it means. And so if anyone disagrees, I'd, I'd be willing to hear why I was wrong, how my understanding of the Greek grammar or even English grammar, for that matter, how it's wrong, how it's flawed. So we look forward to see you guys' comments if you agree or disagree. Amen.